Talking with C, and this is my podcast, Wifey Talk, and thanks for joining me again. This is Season 3, Episode 6. Um, I'm so excited where we're going with this as we're building our character um, in God and becoming uh, wives of Christ and building ourselves to become wives in the flesh. So, as we build our character in God and what he's called us to be as wives, I hope I'm blessing you. I hope I'm, I'm giving you good information, and I hope that you are um uh receiving it um you know this is just what um i studied and this is again from my book i wrote it's called what is a wife by Sione harris it's on uh, barnes and noble's website amazon google library and a couple different places you can look them up lulu.com is where i publish it through i self-published and it's just a study guide so it's just me giving you the verse and then giving you the bullet points that i pulled out of those verses for you to read and go over and to understand what those bullet point what those um what i what those characteristics in those verses um mean pulled out in bullet points underneath of it so it's pretty much a study guide but as i go through the bullet points and i expound on them a little bit more in the podcast i hope that you are blessed and you receive them this is when I was going through my journey trying to figure out what a wife was and God had to show me what the character of a wife was. So I'm still building in character of what a wife is because I'm not all the way there. God is still working on me and I hope he's working on you too. Also, you know, as we just grow in God, I hope that you um, are growing with me because this is just reminder to me of where God is calling me to be and where he's doing with me and because I got some slip ups I got some hiccups in life where I'd be forgetting all this and be like I'm ratchet a little bit but you know I gotta bring it back and be like all right God what'd you say what'd you say again I forgot okay but <laughs> I'm just being honest with you because I don't want you to think like I'm this perfect person I want you to remember that we're all growing in character and God and um, none of us will be perfect but we're just going over it and working on it daily. And this is a daily walk we have with God. So today we're going to talk about something that most women hate. But I hope that I bless you with good knowledge and good truth. And don't hate me for it. But God told me that he would build me through his word in teaching and speaking his word. So let's talk about it being subjective to your husband and submitted to your husband mm, let's pray let's pray dear heavenly father we thank you so much for all you're doing and all you've done lord you are amazing lord i love to call you abba lord i love to call you father and lord thank you for the relationship you've built with my personal father on earth donald harris love my dad dad thing uh, Lord, just thank you for strengthening that relationship with him even more every year. Um, he was a great dad growing up, and I appreciate you, Lord, for put, putting him in my life. And uh, Lord, I appreciate you for being in my life also. Lord, uh, just thank you for the love that you're putting on us and the guidance you've given us and the examples you've put in my life of what a man should be like, my dad. <laughs> and also, Lord, um, for those who didn't have that example, Lord, give them good ground, good foundation of what that looks like in their lives so they know what it is that a man um, is supposed to do and how he's supposed to treat you, love you, and respect you and what that looks like in reality, Lord. Father God, be their father if they have no father, the fatherless. And be a father to the ones who um, didn't get a good example, but had a father who wasn't that great of an example. Lord, put someone in their lives, show them the true character of what a man is and what God can do for them in their lives, Father God. And Lord, um, to be submitted, we would have to understand what that looks like. So Lord, help them to see what a godly man looks like and what it means to be submitted unto him, what a good man looks like, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen, you guys. Amen. All right. So let's dive into this. Okay? Because um, I know this is a touchy sometimes. People get mad. But we're going to dive into it. So we're reading from Titus 2, 4 through 5, NIV. 
and we're reading from First Peter 3, chapter 3, verse 1, NIV. And we're reading from Ephesians 5, chapter 22 to 24, NIV. And sorry, something in here was a little wrong. All right. So let's jump into it. Let's read Titus 2. I know we read from there a lot, but it had so many good nuggets. I had to, I really wanted to break that scripture down in so many different places. So let's read it again. Then they can urge the younger women to love their husbands and children to be self-controlled. Pure. P-U-R-E. I know I cannot say that word. Be busy at home to be kind to be subjective to their husbands so that no one will malign the word of God so that we don't get that word mixed up or uh, misunderstood or try to twist it, anything like that. But to be subjective to your husband, let's dive into that, is to be influenced by your husband. If you cannot be influenced by your husband, then you should never have married him. I know you're like, that is harsh, girl. You ain't even married. How you going to just put that out there like that? But hear me out. If you cannot take advice from your husband, which is pretty much that's how you're being influenced through his advice. I'm confused of why you're with someone you can't grow with or grow beside or you can't take advice from because that's what being influenced really is to be to take advice from him. So if you're being subjective to someone, you're being influenced by them. That means you're taking advice from them. You're learning from them. That's really pretty much what you're doing with your husband. You're learning from your husband and you're taking advice from him. So if you can't be influenced and take advice from him and learn from him, what are you doing with him? Because you're, what are you growing? And, and that's just pretty much what that is. So, um, uh, if he's a good person and a godly man, you'll welcome the influence. So I hope you're picking people that you can take advice from and you can learn from and grow with and build with. And pretty much that's what being influenced means. So to be subjective is just to be influenced through his advice and through his the things he can teach you. So that's why I don't know why we're fighting that so deeply of being subjective to our husbands. Um, because it's not it's not like he over there like, you should do this. It's more like, hey, this would this sounds better or however he talks to you. So um <laughs> I hope you can be influenced by your mate and that you can build with him and learn from him and grow with him. Um first Peter three verse one. Wives, in the same way, submit yourselves to your own husband so that if any of them do not believe the word, they may be won over without words by the behavior of their wives. This, I believe, is a huge nugget that God dropped in the Bible for us. But I want to um, break that down really fast and then explain why I think it's a huge nugget. OK, be gentle, quiet and moldable to the ways of your husband accepting without response to what's happening or what happens let the lord shine through you and your actions your character will influence your husband you know you probably over there like why i gotta be quiet why i gotta be gentle why i gotta be moldable hear me out have you ever gotten quiet in front of your husband or your boyfriend and just start doing the right thing whatever it was they be looking real scared real nervous real like oh my lord oh my lord they looking real oh my lord and then they want to jump in and help or they they apologizing or they they like you know what i was wrong or they're trying to do the right thing now that's that nugget god dropped in the bible instead of being argumentative with him just get quiet and go do what needs to be done. Don't worry. He's going to run behind you because he loves you. That love he has for you, he's going to run behind you. He's going to try to fix it. And you know this. So why are we arguing? It's, it's not saying that you can't tell them how you feel or you tell them what you need. It's just in speak your peace and just keep it moving because they're going to fall in line. 
and just go pray about it. Um, and here's uh, and this is what I mean by that. If your future husband is not a godly man who practices the principles of God and applies them to his life, you may not want to marry him because a godly man's going to go seek God in in all his situations pretty much. And he's going to be like, Lord, my wife mad at me. What should I do? He going to seek God to how to fix the problem. Because when we quiet, they know we mad. So, um, <laughs> and don't be that mad, mad when you slamming doors and stuff. <laughs> don't do that. Um, so as we, um, if, as we just learn to be silent and be patient, God can grow us and grow the relationship. And I know that sounds crazy, but God can do so many things in patience and silence. Because sometimes we have to be quiet so that he can hear God's voice. That's a nugget right there. So that he can hear God's voice. Because if all he hears is our voice, how can he hear God? I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Um, you may want to rethink rushing into a relationship quickly with someone if they are um, not following God. And not like that overly religious following God I'm talking about. Like, he believes that Jesus Christ lived, died, rose again, and is coming back in repentance. And he um, he just, and he's trying to walk it out. And that's a slow process for some. And that's being in God. So, we ain't going to be Pastor T.D. Jakes walking around. We get his man a break. But the fact that he believed that Jesus Christ lived, right lived, died, rose again, and coming back in repentance. That's a scripture. Um, and he is trying to walk that out in his life, and he's trying to apply God slowly to his life because you can't do it all at once because you'll keep failing, and then you'll, keep, you'll, feel, um, you'll feel like you are not worthy or you're not doing the, your best. So with that being said, um, don't rush. Make sure he believes, and then he's trying to walk things out in his life. Um like I said, just don't look for someone perfect, but look for someone trying. Uh, remember um, when you were not all the way right with Jesus. Don't forget that. Okay? Give him some grace and space. If you're already married and uh, you're having these difficulties, seek God. Fast and pray. God will guide you, show you, and give you answers. Um, I know it's a struggle to submit. Um, but God can see you through this. Um, remember that he's there for you and he cares. Uh, and also remember that someone has to change first. So it may have to be you, unfortunately. I know that's a hard one, but sometimes somebody has to change first and it may be you. All right, let's moving on to the next one. Ephesians 5, 22, 24, NIV. Before I move on to the next one, just want to say um, about being silent. I saw it, uh, Yana Van Zan. I can't say her name wrong so much. She, uh, I saw a post from her. And she was talking on a thing on a radio station. And she was saying, your silence is powerful. Your silence is powerful. A woman's silence is powerful. Because the minute you get silent, you can hear God. So it's not also about just hear him hearing God. It's about you hearing God. And um, boy, do um, men love you so, your man, your husband, your future husband loves you so much that he does not want to ever have that moment where he cannot hear the joy from you. So remember that your silence is powerful. And that's not a godly thing. That's just the truth. Um, from my observation that it's my truth my observation I'm seeing that um but also the fact that you can't hear God when you're talking too much and he can't hear God if you're talking too much so we both need to be silent so God can hear so we can both hear God and then also um no one wants to make you unhappy not purposefully so let's give him some space and grace all right so Ephesians 5, 22 to 24 NIV, wives, submit yourselves to your own husband, husbands as you do to the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, as Christ is the head of the church, his body of which he is the Savior. Now as the church submits to Christ, 
So also wives should submit to their husbands in everything. Okay. Did you hear that? Now, as the church submits to Christ, so also wives should submit to their husbands in everything. And for don't forget, submit means to just be gentle, quiet, modable in the ways of your husband. And it's just like his the ways of your husband should be the ways of God. So you're not resubmitting yourself to something new. You're already submitted to God. He's submitted to God. So you're both are j- you're just resubmitting to God through your husband. So it shouldn't be that difficult. Uh, that's why I'm not understanding what is the big fuss about being submitted because it's not like he's controlling you or he's over top of you or he's, t- you know, you're inferior to him. It's just resubmitting yourself through your husband to God, through your husband, because you're already submitted to God and his morals and principles, which your husband should be already believing and applying to his life. So if it's the same morals and principles, you're already submitted. So why are we not submitting to God, knowing that your husband is hearing from God? That's all I'm saying. Because if he's if he's submitted to God, he's hearing from God. And if he's hearing from God, trust me, God's going to same thing God's saying to you. He's saying to him. So let's just submit ourselves to him. It's just as simple as that with submission to your husband. Um, so we're accepting, conforming and following our husband's values and morals. Like I said, his values and morals should be godly values and morals. Your husband should be devoted to Christ wholeheartedly, meaning he just believes that Jesus Christ lived, died, rose again, he's coming back in repentance, and he's up trying to apply God's word to his life daily. He is not going to be perfect. He is not going to be holier than thou because we don't want a man who's so heavenly bound, he no earthly good because we got to make these babies. Okay? I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Lord knows my heart. I got to make these babies. And I know I hate when people say Lord knows my heart, but because <laughs> I said the heart is deceptive. So... <laughs> I shouldn't have said that, but Lord knows what I need. Okay? Lord knows what I need. So I don't need a man so heavenly bound. He's no earthly good because I need to make some babies. I, I got one, but I need about like one, two, two more. Lord, don't don't say three in my head. Whew. I wouldn't know what to do with that many. Um, but I'm just saying, uh, God knows what my heart desires and what I desire is what I should have said. Um, in Proverbs 3, six through seven in IV. <laughs> it states as though in all your ways submit to him and he will make your path straight. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and shun evil. When your husband is under the guidance of the Lord, our Savior, he should do no harm or ill will towards you. So submitting to him should not be a hard thing to do because he will do no harm or ill will towards you. Everything he does should be from the will of God. And the teachings of his word. So how he interacts with you, it ain't like this, oh, thou art the beautifulest. No, it's it's more like he knows he should treat you well. He knows he should be considerate of you, which is an actual scripture where he should consider you as he considers his body. But that's in Ephesians. But we'll jump into that um, on the next season broadcast where we'll talk about the type of man we're looking for. Um. Everything he does, like I said, should come from God. And again, it's not saying that he won't make any mistakes or he won't do stupid stuff. Because <laughs> you're going to make mistakes. You're going to do stupid stuff. So give this man grace and space. I say that a lot because men do better when you give them space and you give them grace and you're not haggering them down or badgering them. Um, to give them time to gather the information. They're not like us where... We want to answer right now. They need time to resolve it, figure it out, and come back and um, with an answer. So it's not going to come right now, right away, or it's not going to change tomorrow. You got to give him time to figure out, okay, yes, yeah, she is right, or okay, this is wrong, what I'm doing, and I need to do it differently. Give that man grace and space. Okay? Furthermore, in Corinthians 7, verse 15, and I bet it states, but if, the unbeliever leaves, let it be so. The brother or the sister is not bound in such circumstances. God has called us to live in peace. So if somebody decides that they don't want to 
act right, be with you, live with you. They don't want to follow Jesus, and he wants to separate himself from you. God's pretty much saying, let that man go. Um, I hope you let him go before marriage so that it won't be so hard because it, it's another scripture that says that through marriage, you that spouse is sanctified. But um, also, I hope that you find peace. Um, so I just... It's such a hard subject of divorce, but I do want to touch on that for a second, even though I'm not married, but I do want to touch on that for a moment. Um, in the original text of this uh, text, 1 Corinthians 7 through 7, verse 15, it says depart, which is in the Greek term means to place um, space between or to depart. Infidelity or any form of abuse, i.e. violence, verbal, physical, or mental abuse causes separation within the marriage and its grounds... Um, for someone not to date that person or divorce a mate. This is what God dropped in my spirit. Just because they are Christians does not mean you have to stay. God has called us to live in peace. That's the scripture. Look it up. God has called you to live in peace. Fast and pray. Ask God for guidance. If you are going through any of these circumstances, um, please, please, please seek God. If you're being, um, if you're in domestic violence, um, just submitting sometimes isn't the answer because God wants you to be safe. So um, please seek God on that. He may want you to leave the house for now to, until he can make that place a safe space. Okay. So um, just submit to God because you don't want to be somewhere unsafe um, and you don't want to be somewhere God doesn't want you to be. So please make sure that you, um, you're fasting and praying and submitting to God in that area. Uh, and I, I hate divorce. I'm a child of divorce. But uh, if God is uh, calling you out of it, <sighs> uh, uh, my heart is saddened for you, but I don't want you to ever sim keep submitting and keep getting beat on or uh, torn down. And he's not called you to stay there. So um, pray again and ask God for guidance. I hope this blessed you. I hope we went over being submissive and I hope that this was informative. Um, this really blessed me as I'm working through some things um, with myself as I'm dating, trying to date and um, trying to figure out uh, what that looks like. So I hope you are blessed. I hope you are received um, every bit of this as I've received it. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for the blessing of your word, your truth, and your guidance. Lord, you are forever showing up in our lives, blessing us, and working on us, and guiding us. Lord, we are grateful. We are thankful. And we are just so blessed to know you. Lord, if uh, one of us is struggling with abuse in our lives from our mates, Father God, give us the strength to seek you, follow the guidance you've given us, and to see it through, to do as you told us to. Lord, take us out of the dangerous spaces and places and put us in your safekeeping and bring us to a place of peace, Lord, in you. Lord, work on that man's heart if he is abusing that woman. And Lord, if the woman is abusing that man, work on her heart so that she can become a wife of noble character so that that man can find a safe place and space because women can abuse too. Lord, I hope that you <sighs> work on their hearts and show them the noble character that God has called them to have and morals and principles within you, both man and woman. In Jesus' name we pray. Oh, man. Thank you, Jesus. Well, thank you for tuning in. This is Wifey Talk, and um, I'm talking with T. I hope this blessed you. I hope this was um, informative. <laughs> And I hope you received it with all God, with all God's love and truth. All right. Bye, you guys.